Hi everybody, this is Vicki. It's Friday, January 29th, 2021, and I am thrilled to be back here with you again. Um, Chuck is in the other room. He's working on music, and I'm so excited to hear what he's gonna, what Father's gonna do through him musically, because the Lord told me this morning that uh, what's ahead musically for him is even better than what was in the past, and I I just, I know it's going to be really good. So I can't wait to hear it and I can't, and we can't wait to share it with you when it comes. Um, we want to thank just very quickly, all of our subscribers. God bless you guys. Thank you for your faithfulness to come. Thank you for those of you who share the videos. We believe father's messages are in these videos. And so, uh, we want to thank you for that. It's, it's just another way to share what the Lord's doing today and what he has to say to his people today scripture yes but he also talks dreams visions words of knowledge prophecy he's just so good to continue to labor with us he's a father that didn't just love his kids back 2000 years ago and uh, but also who loves us today he spoke then he speaks now says in his word he doesn't change so god bless you thank you for coming and listening and for sharing and hopefully for liking and subscribing if you haven't the goal on our part is not to have you know, we're not looking, we're not trying to have a popularity contest here. We just really want what Father has put in us uh, through words and through music to go as far and wide as, as he wants it to go. So thank you if you have shared. And um, let's see, what else? What else? I'm going to put a lot of information in the direction or the description box below. And it's just going to be how you can get a hold of us through the website. Information is going to be there uh, in addition to getting a hold of us here. Uh, and our new email address, if you're using, if you've been using any of the old email addresses, um, I'm going to put the new one in the box below because I'm trying to get everybody to come to the same place. <laughs> and that's one way to do it. So we're a little community here, you guys, you and us, and we're so delighted to be part of your lives and to have you be part of ours, even in this small way through this channel, but also through all the prayers and, you know, getting to know one another. I have uh, a message Father gave me this morning. I, as I was reading, I was in the book of Psalms because I always ask him where he wants me to read. And he had me start in chapter 62, I believe it was. Let me see. Oh no, I'm sorry, chapter 57. And I'm going to read some of the verses that he highlighted to me this morning. And then I'm going to talk about what he's what he wants me to talk about. <laughs> okay. Um, and Isaiah 50 or, and Psalms 57 is uh, verse 5. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. My heart, starting down at 7 now, my heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody awake my glory awake O harp and lyre i will awaken the dawn i will give thanks to you O lord among the peoples i will sing praises to you among the nations for your steadfast love is great to the heavens your faithfulness to the clouds be exalted O god above the heavens let your glory be over all the earth Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to jump over to 61, chapter 61. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. And then in 62, for God alone, O my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from him. He is my only rock and my salvation, my fortress, I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory, my mighty rock, my refuge is God. Thank you, Father, for all these beautiful verses. Okay, and then in Psalm 63. O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. In your name, I lift up my hands. Oh, I love these verses. Okay, and then in uh, chapter 65, we're almost finished with reading. I'm in, just going to read verse 4. Blessed is the one you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house. 
the holiness of your temple. Okay, and now here, these are the last ones, and this is where he, this is where he stopped me and said, okay, so this is the message. He said, uh, I'm in uh, chapter 66, Psalm 66, and I'm starting at verse 16 and going through verse 20. Come and hear all you who hear, come and hear all you who fear God, and I will tell what he has done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth, and high praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly God has listened. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. Okay, you guys, here we go. I'm going to reread verse 18. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. I want God to hear all of my prayers. I want him to be pleased with my thoughts, with the meditations of my heart. <clears throat> I want him to... Uh, I want him to know that I've tasted and seen that he's good and that I want everything that I can have in this life that is him. I want to be closer to him than anything. Um, and so when I read these verses, what I hear him saying is, don't hide stuff in your heart. Don't cherish iniquity. Don't be holding on to sins. Don't be having a thought life that is unclean. Don't be <clears throat> the, the, uh, in other translations, it says, if I had regarded iniquity in my heart, and that word regarded is also, yeah, I just did a thesaurus thing. So for all of you scholars that really, you know, have gone way down deep, I didn't do that today. I just, I'm just, I just did a thesaurus thing. And there are other words that are similar to cherished. It would be things like regarded and uh, honored. And let me see here. I actually, I'm going to put them, here we go. I've contemplated, I've regard, regarded, I have hidden sin, uh, evil doing. Uh, when we're talking about inequity, evil doing, baseness, immorality, injustice, abomination. Let me just go on with some others that Father brings to my mind, even as I say that. Things like unforgiveness and bitterness and resentment and, resentment and covetousness and anger and jealousy and uh, pride and just what are some other things, Father? Uh, self-exaltation thinking even though you never say it thinking that you're better than other people or uh resenting somebody or or hating somebody because of the color of their skin or because of what they own or because of their nationality or anything for any reason just hating you know all of that so he's saying so I hear him saying look you guys can't hold on to things you, you've got to get your hearts clean <laughs> Because you want me to hear your prayers and I want to hear them. But when I look at it like this, it's like I see Father looking at, and this is literally what I'm seeing right now. I see Father looking at a heart that has all of these things, you know, hearing all the words and seeing all the stuff. But over here is this really black spot of filth that makes him go, I don't even want to hear what you have to say. You need to clean that up. Then you clean that up. And it isn't that we can't. Sometimes it's that we don't want to. Sometimes we want to keep those thoughts going. Or sometimes we don't even know. We, we're, you know. we're not even aware that that kind of stuff is still alive in us. I think it's one of the reasons that David, King David, went to him and said, Create a clean heart. Search me. Know my thoughts. Try me. Know my reign. See if there's any wicked way in me. Inside or out inside or out. See if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. That inside and out, I added that. But I think that's what Father's saying to us. He's saying, I want my children clean. You guys, things that get, um, things that we don't deal with. Here was the question. I'll just tell you what he asked, told me to ask you and what he asks me. Same thing. He said, <clears throat> he said this, what is growing inside of you? Is it righteousness, peace, and joy, and Holy Spirit? Is it rest and trust and confidence in me? Or is it abomination, unrest, and anger, 
bitterness, or resentment? Is it unforgiveness, jealousy, covetousness, pride, sexual immorality? Have you let go of the sins of others yet? Or do you still harbor unclean thoughts? Is there wickedness in the hidden places of your heart? When is the last time you examined yourself to see if you are still in the faith? Are you partial in judgment? Ugh. And I think about scriptures where he says, the heart's a deceitful thing who can know it. Well, he's the one that knows it. And I also think about scriptures where he says that um, he'll give us the strength to be able to do what we need to do. He'll give us whatever we need to, to. This is the confidence we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if he hears us, Whatsoever we ask, we have the petitions we've asked of him. In other words, we go to him with something and we say, Father, I need your help with this. And uh, if that's part of what his will is for us, then his answer is yes. If his answer is yes, we get what we've asked for. So let's just do a logical deduction here. If I go to Father and say, I've got this sin, this hidden sin in my in my heart or this un, this unrighteous wickedness whatever going on inside of me or outside I'm physically doing things I shouldn't be doing and I know there's sin and I know they grieve Holy Spirit he doesn't want me doing that and I know that they put a separation between the two of us then all I have to do is go to him and say father help me I confess because you said that if we confess our sins you're faithful and just to forgive us for our sins so I confess that I have this sin father I need your help I'm asking you to give me strength to conquer this sin to conquer these unrighteous thoughts to do whatever I need to do that's going to bring me out of this sin I'm asking you for the strength to be able to do that when we've done that when we take our petitions to him like that and just you know lay it out there he sees it all anyway then his answer is okay yes uh, that's what I want for you. I want you out of sin. I want you out of unrighteousness. I want you out of wickedness. I, I don't want any sin, hidden sin in your heart. And so you've asked me to help you do this. I'm going to give you the strength to do this. The answer is yes. So then we've kind of made ourselves, uh, we've kind of actually painted ourselves in the corner as the old saying goes, because when we ask him for the strength and we don't take advantage of that and we still feel like we can't do it or we still make excuses, we still justify why we continue to allow that kind of thinking or to allow that kind of behavior, then we are basically kind of, you know, basically calling him a liar, you guys, because we're saying to him, well, I know I asked you for strength and you said that if I ask for anything you want, that you'll give it to me. If I'm asking according to your will, and I know you want me out of sin, but either A, I don't believe you're strong enough, or B, I don't believe you've given me the strength, or C, three, I don't know if I was counting or numbering, uh, or uh, well, anyway, whatever. Uh, a, B, and C, or I just um, don't think it's that important to you that I quit. You don't really care. And so you'll just ignore. And so I'll just pretend like I didn't ask, or I'll say that you, or I'll deceive myself and other people and say, well, I just can't quit thinking about these things or doing these things or letting go of this unforgiveness or this anger, this bitterness. I can't come out of this addiction. I can't start doing the things you want me to do. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And we excuse ourselves. And so... We're going to God and we're saying, Father, um, I love you. You're great. You're wonderful. You're awesome. And you're all powerful and almighty and all of these things. And you bless me so much. And uh, thank you and all of that. But I'm going to hold on to this stuff over here. And Father's looking at us going, are you, ki are you kidding me? <laughs> you, what about you came and asked me? What about you searched your heart? What about you... Uh, examined yourself to see if you're still in the faith. Well, what about all that stuff? And so this is what I hear him saying in, in verse 18 in Psalm 66, if I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. I, I think he's waiting for a lot of us to stop making excuses about why we won't change our behavior, whether it's physical or mental, uh, emotional, whatever it is. 
I think he's waiting for us. We want this relationship. You guys, I'm going to use this. I think I may have used this before. I can't remember. But I remember I came, I came out of a really bad lifestyle. And uh, I don't talk about it very often. Not because, honestly, not because I feel guilty. I don't feel guilty. I feel very blessed and grateful that I've been forgiven for my sins. And I don't have desires to do these things anymore. But... 30, how many years ago was it, Father? Over 30 years ago, I came out of a lot of different kinds of addiction, alcoholism and drug addiction. I, I came out of really nasty things in the world that I was doing. And, and Father was so good to take care of helping me quit those things. Tobacco. I... I smoked like a fiend. I smoked four packs of cigarettes a day by the time I quit. And like I said, I don't usually talk about this anymore. Um, and it was, it wasn't that, I'm trying to figure out how to say this to you. I didn't, God didn't tell me I had to quit smoking. I'm gonna say it like that. He didn't tell me I had to quit smoking. I just knew I knew because I knew he's holy and I knew that my body is supposed to be a temple. I knew that I needed to clean me up. Some people say you can't clean you up. Only God can clean you up. God gives us the strength to be able to do it, but we have to do our part. And so I've got to say that because I know there are people that say, well, you can't, you know, you can't do anything. It's all God. No, God gives us the ability and without the ability, we can't do it. But he gives us the ability, but then we have to respond to that strength or that ability he's given us to come out. So when I quit smoking, it wasn't that, uh, it wasn't that God had this separation from me because I knew that he, I knew that he loved me. It was that I really wanted to, I wanted to be closer. And I knew that the guilt and the shame of what I was doing to myself was like a wall. And he even said it to me. He said, Vicki, that, that little cigarette you're smoking, is, it puts this great big wall between us. And he said this, I'm not the one that built the wall. You are. You're the one that built the wall. And he wasn't referring to the sin. He was referring to the fact that we weren't close because I had a wall that I put there and the behind and that wall was covered with uh, shame and guilt and self-condemnation and all of those things. Father didn't want that wall there. He wanted us to have communion, full communion with one another. And it's the same with all of us. We you know, think about how, gosh, don't you get, if you're struggling with something, don't you get tired of feeling guilty or ashamed about it? And, and then here's the other thing. If you don't feel guilty or shame about it anymore, then the question is, has your conscience been so seared in that area that you've just let it go and decide, well, it's not that big a deal. God doesn't care. This is what I was talking about a minute ago, where sometimes it's that we just, we ask him for strength and then we don't take advantage of the strength and we excuse our behavior and say, well, it's, maybe it's not that important to God. Well, God, maybe he understands why I do what I do and he's okay with it because he knows, you know, well, he knows, he sees, and he does understand. But he also wants us to understand that there is strength available to us and all we have to do is ask him for it and he will give us what we need to be able to go through whatever we have to go through to clean up our thought lives, to clean up the uh, things in us that are unclean, that just like uh, Messiah was when he was talking to the Pharisees and he said, uh, you know, well did Isaiah say of you, you uh, your lips draw near, but your heart's far from me. And then when his disciples asked him about it later, this is in Matthew and in Mark, I think it's Matthew 15 and Mark 7, he said, uh, he said, it isn't what goes into a man that defiles him, but what comes out of him. So it's the things, the things that we think, the things we say, and it, he 
I know I'm talking to some people here that are really struggling. And let me just tell you, Father has no partiality when it comes to us coming to him and saying, help me quit this or help me start this. Help me do this thing that you've asked me to do or do in me what I can't do for myself. I yield myself to you. Create a clean heart in me. Renew a right spirit in me. Remember what David said before he said those words in scripture. He said, search me. Search me, O God. Know my ways. Try me. Know my reins. Try my thoughts. If there's my thoughts, if there's any wicked thing in me, clean me up. Lead me, lead me in the way everlasting. He wants us clean, not just on the outside, but on the inside, because our spirits are eternal. Our flesh is going to go the way of all the earth. But he very much cares while we're in this flesh. This is the temple he's given us. To, his spirit resides in this temple, these bodies that he's given us when we belong to him. So he wants our temples clean inside and out. There you go. I'll just say it like that. Don't let condemnation come. The enemy will bring condemnation and say, look how many times you failed. You've tried to change your ways and all, and you've never been able to do it. And you're just wretched. And God probably doesn't care that much about you. And you just, you can't make it. You're a loser. And, oh, my goodness sakes, been through the whole self-condemnation thing and got to realize you guys, self-condemnation is really and truly the enemy coming and and it's like he comes and hands you a baseball bat and says, here, beat yourself up with this. Beat yourself up with the fact that you have not been able to quit this. Beat yourself up with the fact that you haven't changed this behavior in your life. And we take the bat and go, okay. And we start whamming ourselves on the head. We have to stop that. I know I'm laughing, but it's just quite the word picture, isn't it? It really is the word picture. He comes and hands us something and we say, yeah, okay, because he comes to rob, kill, and destroy. And one of the ways he does that is through condemnation. So Father wants the clean heart. Father wants the clean thoughts. Father wants the clean behavior. Father is the one that gives us the strength to be able to do those things. And when we choose not to, and we know that we're supposed to, then that's where we're cherishing iniquity in our hearts. And he's not going to listen to us. Not going to listen to us. That's what it says here. I cried to him with my mouth. High praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. He wouldn't have listened to us telling him how wonderful he is. Oh, you're so good. You're so awesome. You know, you're almighty, all powerful, all holy God. Everything about you is pure and perfect. And look at what you've done. And look at all the amazing things you're doing and how, how good and glorious you are. And, and the Lord's going, well, don't be a hypocrite. If you really think those things about me, do the things I've asked you to do. He loves us so much. He doesn't condemn. He convicts and he reminds us, but he does not condemn. I'm getting a song ready for you. You guys, sometimes, sometimes we just get stuck. But Father knows how to unstuck us. I know that's not a word. I just sort of made it up a good one, huh? He knows how to unstuck us. He knows how to help us get to where we need to be. We just have to have the heart, the hunger, the passion for him that we, that we profess to have, for one, and that he wants for us. We just need to have that. And let me just address that very, very quickly. Just a couple of sentences. If you're not passionate about him, well, first of all, if you're not passionate about him, then most of what, um, most of what I say, at least you're, you're going to just kind of blow it off. But, uh, if you're not passionate about him, ask him to help you be and then get ready because he will. And sometimes the way he does that is uh, not as easy as we would like it to be. I think that's the reason a lot of people won't draw near to him because they're afraid of what's going to happen if they do. This life, just like my husband's prayer this morning, again, our lives are so brief. 
they're a moment, they're a blink of an eye, as scripture talks about it, and then we're gone. Our lives are but a vapor, and then we're gone. But eternity never stops. Never stops. Oh, thank you, Father, for reminding me. This morning, you guys, while I was spending time with him, how do I say this, Father? Because I don't even have, I don't know that I have words, but I'm going to try. I was thinking about, I was thinking, here, let me just have you guys do this. Think about everything you can think of, absolutely everything you can think of in his creation, everything. Think about the things he's made, the things you see, the things you can't see in the spirit realm. Just think about this earth and the sky and the stars and everything just for a second try to go to the place where you can just it doesn't matter what you think about all of it was created except him just think about that for a second you guys everything you can think of was created but not him and I know there's scripture that says he was and is and is to come. But when you really stop and think about it, he doesn't have a peer. There's not another God somewhere else. Everything else was created. Everything was created except him. That I'm sorry, I'm going to use an old phrase that blows my mind. That just blows my mind when I think about that. Everything was created. Air was created. <laughs> Everything was created. Molecules, every single thing. There's nothing you can think of that wasn't created. And he's the one that did the creating. Isn't it such a small thing that we examine ourselves, that we ask him to search our hearts and point out to us what we need to see, help us see, that we examine ourselves and see if we're still in the faith. And if we are, what faith is it really we're in? Are we in faith in him? Do we believe that everything he said is true and everything he wants is he means everything he says do we believe that he's everything he said he is and do we see that we are just one of those created things that he made and it's not that hard for us to look at ourselves and say Okay, what are the things you know you shouldn't be doing, saying, thinking, believing? Where are you making excuses for yourself? Where are you justifying your behavior? Where are you willingly disobeying God? And isn't he worth your surrender, your obedience, your submission, your anything and everything you are? Isn't he worth that? I think the answer is yes when we think about that. The answer is yes. He's worth it. Our relationship with him, to be able to be in communion with the one who was not created but always has been, it's worth those small, small sacrifices that keep him from hearing us when we cry out and tell him how wonderful we, we think he is or we believe he is. Because if we really believe he's all that wonderful, we're going we're gonna to really, truly want to give everything we are, everything we have, anything he asks to him. Okay, guys, I'm going to play. I said I was going to do this a few minutes ago, and I just kept talking, didn't I? Well, that's not unusual. <laughs> okay. So examine yourselves today. Guess what? I'm definitely doing it in my own life. Um, 
Now I'm going to play, this is a hymn from Chuck's CD, Timeless Hymns of Our Heritage, and this is uh, I'm trying to figure out how to say this to you. You guys, the living word of God is full of joy. So you're not going to hear this song in a traditional fashion. When Father inspired my husband to uh, do this particular arrangement, it starts out sounding a little traditional, but don't let religion or preconceived notions about what <laughs> what father enjoys stop you from being able to enter into full uh, fellowship with him even in the music like David did he danced mightily before the Lord and okay I'm going to tell you this because he's he said go ahead and tell you uh, when I was a while ago when I was listening to this song I had I had a vision and I could see Messiah in his kingdom dancing with people full of joy just I mean this was not a somber song this was not a somber occasion this was full on joy so here we go
love that. That's just so full of energy and life. And while I was listening to it this time, here's what I heard Father say, and this is for you guys. He said, he said to tell you, don't let there be anything. He said, okay, Father, you have to give me the words because I, I have the understanding. Remember in the scripture where um, Messiah was talking to his disciples and he said, I have to go away and all this, and he was telling them goodbye and everything. But before that, he said, or he said, I have to go away because basically what he was saying was Satan's coming. He doesn't have anything in me. Do you remember that? Okay. And I was trying to remember if that's in John. I can't remember where that is exactly in scripture, but here's what I heard him say. Tell you, don't let him have anything in you either. You know, to have that freedom to be able to dance with him with total abandon, to be able to praise and worship him with total abandon, to have all of the joy he wants for us to have in this life. He, we have to clean up. We have to get all that stuff out. It's like that cigarette wall. We have to get rid of everything that separates us from him. He doesn't want the separation. And you guys, I don't believe that we want the separation either. So don't let the enemy come and bring condemnation. Just quit what he's asked you to quit. Take up what he's asked you to take up. Let the communion you have with him be as intimate and close as it can possibly be from your side because he absolutely wants that with every one of us. God bless you guys. I'll be back as soon as he sends me back. I had no idea I was doing this today. I think I say that almost every video now. <laughs> Um, but anyway, God bless you, and we will talk to you soon. Information in the description box below. Please like and share and subscribe. Not for popularity's sake. That's not what we're interested in, but so that more people will be able to see uh, and hear the messages Father has for us in this hour, in addition to what we find in his, in his word. God bless you guys. We love you. Keep praying for us. We're praying for you. Bye for now.